You could be wiser as an educated advisor. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Advices, content providers for financial professionals. On today's show, reviewing the Life Event Checklist, part one of our series on developing a financial profile. So let's get down to business. Welcome everyone to this first segment on Life Events. This is a checklist and you know, I've always heard people talk about the bucket list, but this is the life checklist. The bucket list is for the things you wanna do before you die. But the Life Events Checklist is kind of a composite of everything in our culture and our society that we really run against. And if you took your life and you spread it across an analog timeline, you know, just kind of put all the events on a timeline from the day that you're born to the day you graduate from high school, college, get married, have children, have a down payment for a home. If you were able to look at all these checklists, you could start to map out a decent plan for your life. And then, of course, as you go, you make adjustments. Some people use the life event checklist on a one-year platform, a three to five-year platform, and a long platform to retirement, kind of giving you different ideas. But let's just look through some of these basic ideas, basic topics. One is having a new child or having a new grandchild. If you just had a child, that could change your life. You're gonna maybe have to look at your life insurance again. You're gonna to have to look at maybe life insurance on the child, education for the child. You're gonna to have to start putting money aside for tuition and things of that nature for later on in life. So the impact of a child or a new child, and remember grandchildren, grandparents love to, to contribute to grandchildren's education, their, maybe their fund, they have a, maybe a mission project that they wanna go on, join the Peace Corps, they're all very much into helping out. So anytime you have a new child or a grandchild, that could be a, a major event. Maybe you have a new job or promotion a new job could be, hey, I got a new job and I, the reason I took it was because I'm making more money or the job I'm in, I have a promotion. So I really like that because what should I do with that new money? I'm used to my budget, hopefully you have one, and you're gonna establish basically what am I gonna do with this money? Part of it's gonna go to long-term retirement. Part of it's maybe gonna go for a down payment on a home or for educational purposes. You'll have reasons for why you're gonna park that new money, that new cash flow. And remember, advisors, we're pulling the Life Events Checklist. It's coming right from Advices Advance. You can get the 30-day free trial. Just call, uh, write me on, on the show address on my website at lifesizesolutions.com, and I'll be happy to give you the 30-day free trial. Another thing that we're looking at is receipt from inheritance. Hey, listen, I know my kids just found out they're going to get money when I die. Well, they're kind of excited about that, and I hopefully they'll be excited about my passing too, apparently. So you want to know, hey, am I going to take constructive receipt of an inheritance someday? Someday I might have to be able to say, hey, look, I, and when I'm 60, 65, my parents will probably be gone. I'm going to receive some money. I'm going to start planning for that event. And remember, major investment gains or losses. It comes tax time. Hey, I want to invest. I want to be able to make money on my mutual funds, my ETFs for retirement. Some of it's non-qualified monies. But I want to be able to look at an event. Did I have a gain and did I take constructive receipt and do I want to go ahead and use that money for something? I want to be able to have a, already an earmark if I do well. I also want to have an earmark position of repositioning my portfolio if I have gain of a loss and also take, look into the tax consequences of that loss. I want to know, do I have a change in marital status? Maybe I'm single. Now I'm married. Maybe I divorce. Any of those changes in my marital status are going to affect taxes, are going to affect the division of assets in a divorce. And coming together, should I file married separate? Should I file married jointly? All these events have consequences. Some of them are tax. Some of them are monetary and direct impact on your budget. So you want to go through all these life check events lists. Change in estate planning. Hey, listen, things change. All of a sudden, as you get older, you may fall in love with a nonprofit organization, one that you really appreciate, and you want to see them go on into perpetuity after you're gone. You may want to have a change in your estate plan. You might have really done well, and your estate plan didn't really recognize that, and now you're going to do planning, not so much for estate planning, since everybody's unified credit is probably north of $10 million, but many states in the United States, remember, keep in mind, that many of these states don't ditto the federal estate taxes. So you could very well have estate taxes at the state level of your residence. Another one is the sale or purchase of a home. First thing millennials do when they get out of school is they're in shock that they have so much tuition, so much um, a college loans out on the street. It's difficult to get a home sale, to buy a home when I have this kind of money. So I have to learn what it's like to kind of be tight with my first two to three years out in employment and try to really stay low to the ground and knock down my debt. Once I start knocking that down, 
I'm going to be looking at the sale or, or the purchase of a home. If I want to buy a home for the first time, there are first time buyer issues that you can get involved in that could be helpful in your securing a home. Sometimes you have to sell your home. Maybe you're moving on to a bigger place. Maybe you're downsizing as a senior. But those events have issues to them. Some of them, you could be making money on it. What am I going to do with that money of the sale of the home? I need to kind of think about that now before the event. And remember, I might want to start a, a business or even purchase a business that I like. Some people, some baby boomers are saying, hey, listen, I'm retired, but I don't want to retire from life. So I'm going to start looking at small business. I might want to create something. I might want to try the Shark Tank and see if I can get some funding or go to crowdfunding or any of these uh, you know, places that actually will help you start your business from an economic point of view. But remember, you're looking at those things as a senior, but a lot of people are saying, hey, I'm tired of working for the man. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to start my own business. Well, that's a checklist around the line. You may have a say, by the time I'm 50, I want to be working for myself. Another one is, of course, did I sell or acquire any assets? Now, remember, when I'm talking about assets, you know, it could be gold and silver on the heavy metal side. It could be, now I'm doing non-qualified purchases of mutual funds or ETFs or REITs. Maybe I don't mind being a landlord later on in my life, so I'm going to go ahead and start acquiring real estate. I need to know, did I sell it? Did I acquire it? What are the tax ramifications? And what are the cash flow issues if I go ahead and use my money? Remember, in a lot of real estate transactions or even sometimes buying on margin, we're using a leverage position. And I need to know about that, the tax consequences, the cash flow, and what happens if I get a call. Another one is death in the family. How will you, being the breadwinner, if you're the breadwinner, and maybe your spouse is also a breadwinner, how will that affect your family? Is your income and the way you live predicated on two lives? If so, I need to look at the ramifications of death of a family member. Uh, that's going to bring in life insurance. It's going to bring in ownership issues. There's a lot of things to think about, especially if I have young children and custodial rights. What happens if mom and dad both are gone? Who's going to take care of the kids if they're under 18? All this needs to be mapped out on your map, this timeline I've been talking to you about. Another one is, of course, New, invest, new investments of insurance. All of a sudden, I have to buy property casualty insurance. I have to buy life insurance. I have to have medical insurance. I might have disability insurance. All of a sudden, we need to be able to protect what we own, our lives, our breadwinners, and the disabilities that could occur, and, of course, medical events. All these happen, and that's why I like, and I have a little side here, I love HSA accounts, tax deductible up front, tax-free withdrawals as long as it's for qualified insurance premiums and or qualified medical expenses. And of course, retirement. This is the big thing. People are starting to look. If you're a millennial, you're saying, hey, I'm probably not retiring until age 70. More than likely, the Social Security timelines from 62, 66, and 70 are going to be moved and pushed up. So we're starting to think people are going to live to 70 because they're going to be living until 100. So your generation, the millennial generation, could witness this. Thinking about retirement any longer is not going to be a 20-year number. It's going to be a 30-year number and probably later in life than you expected. So you need to start thinking about that. Gains and losses from a business partner. Listen, there's, there's all kinds. I have a partner in a business. He and I share the expenses. We share the revenue. But what would happen if my partner got hurt or my partner died? There's ramifications there that I need to look at. I need to have that mapped out on the timeline when we took constructive receipt and was there any gain or loss with my business partners. I have to kind of associate all this to get my map true so I can start making marks. When will this occur? When will it happen? When will we start talking about succession planning? All those things really matter. And when you start combining this, then you're starting to look at educational front, back to the kids. Educational funding. Think about it. There's so many things going on, and we're going to have a couple shows on this on college funding, how to do it right. And from an advisor point of view, could this be an area that you want to get into? It's really unique. Not that many people play in it. But education, from anywhere from doing regular getting your bachelor's to getting an MBA or a master's, all the way getting to a PhD. All this costs money. And of course, you want to start planning for that now. So when I'm looking at things like Child education, that's a big one. And another one the boomers have been playing with is not only are we taking care of our children, the next generation in education, but we've been taking care of our parents. Long-term care or elder care costs have been unbelievably through the roof, and a lot of baby boomers are paying both sides. They're paying their parents' long-term care costs, and they're helping their children with tuition. Both of those events on the timeline need to be there, and especially for boomers, we've been the, what we call the sandwich generation, in between two generations, paying two costs, Educational cost is a big number, and so is 
of course, long-term care. And I throw in a side one there. If you had as many daughters as I've had, you also might have to pay the wedding costs, which is, again, sometimes not a very cheap idea. All these different checklists you should map out and say, I've looked at this. We kind of get a guesstimation of when it's going to occur so that you can plot. This is part of developing a financial profile, looking at the life checklist and understanding what you're going to do when those things occur. Don't forget to watch our next segment on creating a budget, part two of our series on developing a financial profile. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on the show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or your compliance officer. And don't forget, you can subscribe to my consumer show, Steve Savant's Money, The Name of the Game, daily content that you can post on your website, social media accounts, and database distribution. I'm Steve Savant. Thanks for watching.